Okay, let's drink a racket here. Uh, the reason why I'm showing you this video is because, you know, everybody who plays tennis ought to string their own rackets. And I say that just simply because no one wants to be dependent upon somebody else to string your racket for you, especially when you may find that you need it and, uh, you know, you can't get a quick turnaround or maybe you go through so many strings that you just want to economize a little bit and not have to pay quite so much out of pocket for someone else to string your racket. So I'm looking for the other clamp. There we go. Okay, that's all clamped in. Now I'm gonna cut the strings out of this thing. Today I'm gonna be doing the hybrid. I'm gonna be using uh, uh, Wilson NXT and also Babolat uh, RPM Blast. Uh, the reason I'm using uh, expensive string is because uh, I have it and I don't get it doesn't get used so I might as well splurge and enjoy it with myself but it should turn out pretty good this is a bigger headed racket and uh, the larger the head racket sometimes require a little bit higher tension too so we'll see how this one turns out how it plays That's always a hard hole to get into because it's dark. It's very shallow because of the peg going down through it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to even this out. So I've got one on each side of the string there, you can see. And I'm going to pull this out so that I have 10 feet of string on both sides. Okay. There we go. Then I'll go ahead and I'll pull this thing. Because it's above the stringer, I'm going to pull it down through the hole here. And go ahead and tighten that down on it. Okay, I'm going to also adjust the string tension here. Right now I've got it on... I've got it on 58. I'm going to make this in... Uh, 59 on the mains. So I'm putting this on 59 on the mains. The crosses, I'm going to raise the poundage a little bit. As you put the crosses in, it's going to lengthen the distance this string has to travel and so it's going to actually tighten up these strings so that it makes them kind of even in tension. Say, so now I'm going to uh, put my clamps on. This clamp's going to be on this side, so I'm going to clamp it first up here at the top. And in order to keep it from slipping, when I do my first pull, I put this clamp behind it. Now we're ready to pull our first string. So I'm going to grab my first string, which is the other side, and push that up, crank it back, and now I've done my first pull. Now I release this guy, because I don't want it to slip. Be very extra careful. And then I'm going to come back and put that right here. Clamp that, then I can release this and clamp the other side. And pull that one. Now I can pull this one, release this one, bring that down here. The other clamp's in the way, so I'm just gonna put it up here above it. And now I'm ready to really get on a roll here, so. We'll go ahead and start uh, stringing the rest of this now. The first couple of pulls are the hardest ones just because everything isn't fixed in stone. So I've got that one pulled over there. I release the clamp. I'm going to do the second one over here. Pull that one over there. Put it through. And now I can pull these now. Tighten that one up. Clamp, make sure you always clamp those things. You lose the clamp pressure, you start over. Pull that one. 
Like I said, this is RPM Blast. It's kind of a shaped string, so uh, it gives you a lot of extra spin, and it's got a lot of pop to this string, so that's really good. Okay, so we've got the, the bed done, and you'll notice it sounds just like a harp. If it does that way, that's the correct sound, because of the longer strings, they have a lower pitch to them, higher strings should have the same. So if you do the same string on the outside, you should get a nice, even pitch. So now I'm looking for a place to tie this off. I'm going to go down here a couple of strings where there's a little bit bigger hole and I'm going to lock this into place so it doesn't wiggle while I do this and I'm going to shove that through there and I'm going to tie this in place. And this is really not that complicated. Just go ahead and put an overhead knot in it and grab your pliers, Pull that string tight so it tightens it on this side and then pull it down like that. You're going to lose a little bit of tension, but you're going to gain a lot of tension as the racket evens itself out. So it might be loose at first, but it will tighten back up. And then I can release that string right there. And then I'll go over and I'll do the other side. Okay, so we're done with the mains. I just want to warn you, don't ever let these clamps right here on the sides, if those things ever come loose, uh, you're basically starting over because the whole racket will warp out of shape, okay? If any of these clamps come loose while you're doing the process, if you bump it and it slips off, you're done. you got to start all over again. So be careful as you walk around and you work around it. So I'm going to start down here at the bottom and I'll finish at the top again, but I'm just going to start here on the second row just because it's my habit and I'll lock this in place there now it won't move and then I'm going to start going across and going into the same hole on the other side See if I got the same hole. Okay, so this one's this one, this one's that one, and this one's that one, okay. Now I'm gonna go back across, making sure that I'm alternating the opposite way. All right, and I need to shove that in the hole. Now you'll find that a lot of times the strings, when you try and push them through, they're going to be blocked by a different string, which is a real pain. But come down here now with your clamp and clamp this bad boy right there. And now we're going to try and find a string that we can push that up through and tie it to. And that one happens to be the one right next to it. So I'm going to go on. I'm going to just tie the overhand knot right here. Grab my pliers. Give it a nice tug. You have to have this clamp tight, otherwise you can't pull on it. You'll just pull string through. Give that a nice tug. And just because I don't want to deal with it being in the way all the time, I'm just going to clip it off shorter so it's not so bad. So I wanted to make one point for you. As you go through these strings, uh, you'll find out that uh, most of the time this number of uh, mains are going to work out so that if I start going over the string over here on this side, that I'll finish going under the last string. So that's another way of telling whether you make a mistake or not. 
So how, see how I went, I went under that last string right there and up. So I started over on this one, I finished under. Okay, we're at the very end here. All I've got to do is get it up through this last little loop and tie the knot, and we're done. So I'm gonna stick that up through there, and right through there. That allows me to tie an overhand knot. And I'll grab my pliers and give it a good yank cinch that down. Okay, we're done with that part. I can unclamp the clamps and then uh, go ahead and release the, well, let's go ahead and cut the, the extra strings here. Let's see if I can find my other little cutters here. It's nice little cutters. Trim those off so they're not in the way. Be a bad time to cut it too short. And then last but not least, I'm gonna cut that one off. Okay, we're done. Take that off. It's a nice feeling when it doesn't change the shape when it pops, it doesn't pop off. The next thing I do is I take these and I straighten them because these grooves will actually be the grooves that the racket will settle into. And we want to have those dents and dentations to be in the right place. So once you string it, straighten it. Mm -hmm.